It's both. Uh, one of the difficulties I've, ha I've faced in trying to Darwinize the field of consumer behavior is that most social scientists typically argue that it's predominantly nurture, right? We're born with empty minds and it's ultimately socialization that makes us who we are. Evolutionists don't negate the importance of nurture, but of course they recognize that there is a biological heritage that also defines who we are, so it's both. We are an inextricable mix of both. The, the holy grail of the research that I, or the endeavor that I've been engaged in for the past 15, 20 years, is to ultimately offer the meta framework that allows us to have a consilient field. Uh, for those of you who, who may not know, E.O. Wilson, again, who was at the University of Alabama for his earlier education, wrote a very famous book in the late 90s called Consilience. This is a term that very few people are familiar with, which he kind of reintroduced into the lexicon. Consilience refers to unity of knowledge. So physics, chemistry, and biology are consilient fields because they have meta frameworks that help organize all the knowledge within those fields, right? On the other hand, sociology, uh, to some extent social psychology, uh, are, or, and much of the social sciences are not consilient fields because people can't even agree on the most basic starting points. And so, if you'd like, my ultimate goal, which I hope that I've been successful at doing, is to argue that the consilient framework for the social sciences is evolutionary theory. Whether you are studying criminality or economic behavior, or in my case, consumer behavior, the, the theory that allows us to organize all the disjointed findings within those fields is evolutionary theory. And so I hope that one day, uh, hopefully within my lifetime, it will become a completely part of normal science for any social scientist to understand the merits of evolutionary theory within their respective fields. So that's really the, the grand goal, if you'd like. Now, we've evolved big brains, and these big brains near need nourishment. Uh, and so there's endless pursuits that we engage in that don't necessarily map on in a clear one-to-one -one mapping with a specific evolutionary drive. Uh, why do we want to take a cruise to Alaska to learn about the fauna there? Well, there, there isn't a direct evolutionary... And, and that, that's actually an important point because detractors of evolutionary theory think that evolutionists try to come up with a adaptive story for every possible phenomenon. And, and we certainly don't do that. Anybody who does that is not a very good evolutionist. Uh, we have big brains, and one of the byproducts of having big brains is that we love all sorts of things, literature and great cinema and great music, which may not be necessarily tied to a specific biological problem. That's what we call an exaptation. It's a byproduct of evolution. So our big brains have evolved through an evolutionary mechanism, but the byproduct of this big brain is that I want to keep going and learning about the world and it need not be tied to any biological imperative.